Is it cannibalism if you eat your own body? That was a question posed by Philip Mercer in his book Tales of Old Sussex. I'm Richard Vobes and I am on the trail of the man who ate his own leg. I'm on the trail of John Davis, a Welshman who came to Horsham in search of work. In 1771 he gets appointed as a coachman in a large house somewhere in Horsham. Now I don't know where. Part of his job was to take his master up and down to London, also to Tunbridge Wells where presumably he was there for the season. In 1772 John Davis was obliged to bring his coach down to Ashington for some repairs. Now somewhere down here was some coach works but I'm not sure exactly where and if it wasn't coach works then it was probably a favoured blacksmith. Anyway these repairs were going to take some time, two or three days, and so John Davis was obliged to stay at the local inn here at the Red Lion. It's while Davis is staying at the Red Lion that he gets into an argument with one Richard Jackson. Jackson operates the toll which is very close to the inn. Davis tells him that he begrudges paying for the tolls for the new turnpike roads and in Sussex these roads are pretty much impassable and he says it's very difficult to tell the difference between the toll gate roads and the ordinary roads and where possible he will avoid paying those tolls even though it's only threatens. Once the repairs are complete Davis hitches up the coach to his horses and decides to take a different route back, one that he scouted while he was waiting. Now the roads are rutted and in a bad state as mentioned, however because it's February, because it's cold, because there's been snow, they are frozen and Davis thinks he'll risk it. Davis circles out of Ashington heading west and I think towards Park Lane going across country. This is the sort of route that I think he took, although obviously a lot has changed since then. There's another toll at Dial Post and the reason I think he went to on Park Lane was to avoid that because he seems to head towards Warminghurst and then Goose Green up towards Southwater and then Horsham, or at least that's his intention. I can't emphasize how much that the lanes are not fit really for coaches, even back then, even on the turnpike roads. On this circuitous route that he's taking, they're firm because of the ice but rutted and the coach gets stuck several times. Now every coachman carries boards for this one purpose. They can shove them underneath the, the wheels and get them under them nice and firm to give them grip and encourage the horses, push on the back and he does that obviously several times but at some point along this route he must have hit a particularly deep one, the coach loses balance, topples and with him pushing it crushes him on this firm cold ice. Yeah you really get the impression that this is a, an old lane from these high banks so it's easily to imagine this could possibly have been the route. Anyway it's believed that Davis must have been out cold after hitting the ground with the coach on him, probably from hypothermia. It may well have been snowing, we, we don't really know. It seems that he stayed there for at least two days and it wasn't until a shepherd stumbled across him that he was discovered, but even then there was no immediate rush because the shepherd thought he was dead. He went back to the village, he gathered up a couple of stout boys and brought them back to the lane where they chopped down a, a couple of boughs, they used these to lever up the coach and they dragged the body out. They took him to a place called Jupp's Hovel. Now on an OS map, on an old map it is marked, it's not actually on a modern day map. The place really existed and it was built I think in 1410 and it was lasted until about the Tudor period. By the 17th century it must have been just some ruins. Anyway they placed the body there presumably to give it some dignity and put it in some form of shelter, but as they did that he moved and the shepherd realized the man wasn't dead after all. 
The shepherd thought quickly, decided to carry the body back to his master, a retired colonel by the name of Merrifield, where he could be cared for. Merrifield takes him in and they give him a room. They find him a bed and they call the doctor. And when the doctor arrives, he takes one look at the man and he says, in order to save this man's life, you're gonna have to cut off the leg. <coughs> so the deed is done. The doctor, who is uh, an ex-surgeon, amputates the leg. And it seems that Davis must have been in a coma because he doesn't protest or anything. And in fact, stays like this for some time, maybe a day or two, but eventually he does wake. And when he wakes, he's delirious, he's in a fever, he's breathing rapidly, and the doctor returns. He instructs Merrifield to feed him with pie and ale. The ale, obviously, to anaesthetise him and try and keep the pain, which must have been quite severe, uh, down to an absolute minimum. Davis eventually comes out of this delirious state. He wakes, his consciousness returns, and Merrifield has the terrible job to tell him about the leg. Well, you can imagine, Davis is surprised, shocked, and he doesn't believe it. And so he demands to see the limb. To Merrifield's consternation, they couldn't find the leg. It was odd. I mean, it couldn't have walked off on its own. So all the staff were questioned. Nobody knew anything about it. Eventually, though, the, the cook shuffled forward and admitted that she had been confused. You see, she'd found this hacked up piece of meat packed in ice at the back of the pantry and her orders were to make pie for the gentleman upstairs. She thought this was the meat to use in the pies for the gentleman upstairs and so she'd used it. And so you see, Davis became the man who ate his own leg. Amazingly, John Davis recovered and went back to work. He carried on as a coachman into his ripe old age. Well, I hope you enjoyed that tale. There are more to follow. In the meantime, why not follow, like and subscribe or leave a comment? It'd be great to hear your thoughts. You could, of course, become a patron and help support what we're doing here. But until next time, thanks so much for watching. Bye for now.